everybody. So it's a Tuesday uh, this past weekend, starting on Thursday, actually, the NFL draft. Um, the Giants get high grades from a lot of people for their draft, and the Giants and Joe Judge, nice enough to join us here on the Michael K Show. Coach, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you today? Good, guys. How are you doing today? We're doing okay. I I'm wondering, uh, this is your first NFL head job, and now with all the uncertainty thrown in, with what's going on in the world, when you'll be able to actually coach hands-on with your players, has it taken some of the joy and anticipation away, Joe? No, I think uh, first the first thing you touched on is obviously there's a lot of things in the world right now going on, and, and that's a bigger picture. You know, we have to keep our minds on. And with all that being considered, you know, listen, you get to wake up every morning. We get to do football. I get to work with the staff. And now we're getting to work with the players for the virtual program. So in any avenue it is, we're enjoying doing football. Joe, when you look back at what you took over, do you rely on information that Gettleman and Abrams and, and the Giants tell you, and, and or how much did you look back at last season to evaluate what you've taken over? Well, first off, you have to use the information from inside the building, people you work with. So absolutely, we've had a lot of in-depth discussions and uh, trying to catch us up a little bit on like what's happened here in the past. But the biggest thing we did as a staff is we got in here, we turned the tape on, we watched it collectively. We formed our evaluations, and from there we put together a game plan in terms of how to attack this offseason with free agency, the draft, and everything else involved. How's the virtual camp going? Uh, again, it's never been done before, so you're not working off a, a previous blueprint. So how is it going? I'll tell you what. I'm really pleased with how the players are working. And, again, if there's one generation who would be able to pull off the virtual program, it's these mm -hmm. players right now. You know, they're so savvy with the tech that – you know, for them, it's just kind of jumping on and doing something they've done already. You know, for us as coaches, we made sure we kind of had an acclimation period for ourselves when they closed the facilities down. It took us about a week to really, you know, iron out all the wrinkles and make sure that we're all, you know, capable of using all the mediums we had present to us. I'll tell you what, one thing you find out is how resilient the coaching staff are. You find out that it's a group of figured-out type guys. I told the coaches, hey, listen, at some point we have to present tape to the players, to the prospects of the draft. Let's make sure our setups are accordingly. These are guys that are, you know, separated by thousands of miles all over the country. Mm -hmm. Each one has an independent setup, and each one has just figured it out and made it, you know, more than functional. You know, it's, it's, it's impressive seeing how each one set up their deal. Coach, you had said that these players think they know what it's like to be a pro, but they don't know yet, and, and they're going to find out. But with everything kind of in hiatus right now, when do you think they can learn that lesson? And are you concerned that it might take longer than usual under different circumstances? Well, look, it's our job right now. We actually have a rookie mini camp, so to say, this weekend where we get our first exposure with the rookies. And our job right away is to introduce them to the league. And it's not jumping in all X's and O's right away, but it's it's jumping in terms of what they can expect from our program, you know, what we're going to demand, how they're going to fit into the big picture. And then it's their job to put their head down and work day by day on whatever we ask them to. Look, hopefully everything gets back normal for the entire world and we get these players in here at some point this spring. If that's not the case, then as soon as we get them in training camp. But, you know, we're going to have constant communication as, as much as the league allows throughout the entire process to help along the way, you know, for our strength staff to be available for them at all points, for our nutritionists to be available for them at all points, to give them guidance. And then as far as we're concerned with coaches, it's not only so much about just getting introduced to the X's and O's, but also just the culture and emotionally how they have to handle themselves in the National Football League. Uh, Coach, look, I can't wait to get them on the grass. I don't know how soon that'll be. Right. Coach Joe Judge of the New York Giants is our guest here on the Michael K. Show. You, you're a relatively young man, uh, Coach. I'm just wondering, were you tech-savvy coming into this, or did you have to ramp that up? Well, it's always changing and adapting. Uh, we use it so much that it helped me a little bit. we got a great IT staff that when there's something that maybe needs to be bridged, they do a great job of helping us out. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm just good enough to keep up with my kids and figure out what they're doing on their devices. So if I can keep up with them, I'm probably ahead of the curve with most of the coaches in the league. All right, tell us about your first uh, round pick and what separated him from the other offensive linemen that were on the board. Well, I'll tell you what, it was a very deep class, very talented class this year when you talk specifically about the offensive linemen. The thing that stood out to us about Andrew was, you know, really the pedigree he came from. The culture he'd been brought up in as far as Georgia football, the high school, Pace Academy he played in. And then also what he demonstrated on tape. You know, one thing about those guys down there is you get to see them play against the top players week in, week out. So when you watch the top pass rushers coming out, with the exception of really, you know, Chase Young who didn't play against him, but when you watch the top pass rushers coming out, you have to watch them against him. 
and you get to see how he matches up against the best guys coming out who you're evaluating for the defensive side of the ball. So that stands out to us a good bit. His consistency, his level of play, um, you know, his nastiness and finishing blocks, those are things that stood out to us. There's a lot of things he has to improve on and get to work on, you know, as all rookies do. Uh, but I'll tell you what, over the duration of his career at Georgia, he was consistent, and that's important to us. Now, there was some thought, Joe, uh, Joe about um, with the fourth pick, you could have gone Isaiah Simmons or you could have gone the offensive lineman. You want the uh, offensive lineman. Was that a tough call? I know you don't want to talk about another team's player, but was that a tough call because Simmons seems like such a hybrid sort of player that could play anywhere? You know, we really made the decision we thought was best for the Giants, and you know, look, you got to run the ball, you got to stop the run, you got to cover kicks, and I think it's going to help us run the ball and protect for the passing game as well. How, about, how did you feel about the rest of your draft? I'm very pleased, very happy. But I think this, it's, you don't want to get too excited, you know, just drafting someone. You only get excited when they get on the field and they start mm-hmm. helping you improve and they start helping your team win games. And that's really the mark of it. You know, it's, hey, listen, they've all got potential, they all have ability. It's our job to, you know, really tap into them and get the most out of it. It's their job to show up every day and work. You know, the true excitement is when you're dealing with guys who are helping you have results. And that's right now, look, we got a room full of vets going through the virtual program that they're on the same page as well. And we're just trying to get the most out of everyone right now so we can start seeing results. Coach, we got I got to be up front with you since we've talked about it when you weren't on the show. we got to ask you now that you're here. We yep. we kind of were confused around the whole not saying Daniel Jones's name thing. And then this weekend right. it came out, you said it in the conversation with Andrew. Uh, what was the logic behind you not saying Saquon's name or Daniel Jones or these obvious starters' names? You know what? It's, it's not that I was ever trying to avoid saying someone's name. It's the context of questions we're asking. I'm a big believer, and listen, it's tough enough to do their job. And right now they have to focus on just learning their system, learning their scheme, fitting in and improving. Uh, I'm not trying to create expectations for them, to, for them to go ahead out there and meet. You know, they've got enough on their plate already as it is, as everyone does on the team. You know, for me not to say Daniel or Saquon has nothing to do with me avoiding or trying to pretend they're not part of our roster. They absolutely are. But the reality is when the questions are asked in the context that they want you to put a title or a label on somebody, that's a tough thing. You know, I'm not going to put that on any player ever. You know, I'm not going to create expectations for them outside of what we demand as an organization already. But isn't but there you... a certain layer to the fact, like, don't the teammates expect that Daniel Jones is their starting quarterback? And, like, there's a certain level of everyone sort of gets in line knowing that Daniel Jones is the starter for this team? Listen, we have a level of expectation for every player on our team. You know, it's, it's to me, you start getting the predictions for the players. That's where it gets, you know, iffy. And listen, I'd be less than genuine if I didn't tell you right now again. You know, our depth chart's not set. Do we expect a lot out of Daniel? Absolutely. We absolutely do. Um, but we're going to give him time to grow and learn. And right now he's in the you know, early stages of a new system, and we have to be fair to him to give him time to learn it and develop within it. You know, for us to go out right now and create a lot of expectations for someone who's never been in this system, who hasn't been on the field with us yet, that we haven't had a chance to put our hands on and work with, that's not fair to the player. And we have to make sure we do right by our players. Uh, I'm fascinated. I read a couple of things. I just wanted to run by you if you did indeed say this, that when you spoke to the draft picks, you said don't bring up Super Bowl when you talk to the media. What was behind that? Why don't you want them to to express high expectations for themselves and the team if, in fact, you said that? It has nothing to do with we want them to accomplish long term. It just has to do with right now. You, you talk about these players, and when you get drafted, you're on top of the mountain, and you should be. You, know, you should feel 10 foot tall and bulletproof. It's it's a milestone in your career. It's a lifetime milestone. You really you know reach a, a point in your career that you have a chance to compete and really advance. The thing is, when you get overly emotional, sometimes you have a tendency to say things you may want a later regret. Mm. So to go out there and try to make some kind of expectation or set some kind of standard that you have to meet, the reality is these guys have to have time just to learn how to be professional football players. That's what it is, and they don't know what it takes yet. And that's not their fault. That's just naturally what it is. You know, the only advantage they have over the guys they're competing against at this point is fresh young legs. Mm -hmm. And everyone that they're going to compete against has experience in the techniques, experience in the schemes and system. Uh, They know how to emotionally handle the the duration of a season. They know how to mentally prepare. It's our job as coaches to get these players ready and teach them how to be a pro so they can go out there and compete on the level ground. It's not about not having someone be excited. We're trying to take, you know, the air out of the balloon. It's all about just making sure that, hey, listen, you don't get caught up in the emotion. And don't put something out there, as you see players every year do, that later on you're going to regret. Uh, I appreciate the effort as far as the expectations are concerned, Coach. 
Mm-hmm. But being somebody that's worked in this market, grew up a giant fan, when you're the sixth overall pick as a quarterback, when you're the second overall pick, like Saquon Barkley, playing for a franchise that has won four Super Bowls in, in the biggest city in North America, the expectations are going to be there. And in my opinion, I'd rather them embrace those expectations because you're not going to be able to hide from it. And the expectations that are going to be on you. I mean, you're you're coaching a team that Bill Parcells coached, that Tom Coughlin coached, you know, that 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 Owens coached. That, you know, that you, there's a there's a history and there's a level of expectation, rightly or wrongly, that when you play sports in New York, that you're just going to have to live with. And in my opinion, I'd rather prepare them for that expectation because playing in New York and it's not conceit. It's like reality is different than playing anywhere else. When it comes to that, when you've got the New York Yankees, just a few blocks away with 27 championships, the expectations are always going to be through the roof. Okay. Do you call in question to that? I don't disagree with what you're saying. There's, there's high expectations. This is New York city. We have to embrace that. You're right. But it's also April 28th. And we have to let these guys worry about April 28th and then put it together to April 29th and string these days together. We're not going to accomplish anything for February, all right, in April 20, in April 28th. We've got to make sure we take care of today and string that together with tomorrow. And then eventually that accumulates into the goals you want to have. Right now the responsibility these guys have is just taking care of day by day, and that's the focus we have to have. Do you um, feel that, the advantage of being a first-time coach, usually the league gives you time with your players before everybody else has now been erased, Joe, because of the delay that's happening uh, with the season and, and the and the, uh, the mini camps. No, the advantage always goes to whoever most efficiently uses their time prepares the best. Mm-hmm. We're all able to play, even playing line right now. It's our responsibility as a staff to make the most of it and make sure we put our players in the right position. When I look at um, people's evaluation of the draft, people I respect, everybody said the Giants did a good job, but did they really get enough of the edge pass rusher that they've been missing? And I, I saw what Dave said. It's not about one guy. It's about the whole defense. Is that essentially your feeling as well, Coach? I think it's always about the entire team, but I also think that we have to give people a chance to develop. You know, just because of, you know people expect a certain flashy name, you know, I'd like to remind that you know, two of the most effective pass rushers and edge players you know, in their generation, Jared Allen and Rob Nikovich, both these guys entered the league as a long snapper. So they had to develop over time, eventually get a shot and get a chance. So we've identified guys with skill sets. You know, we're going to compete. We're going to try to put them in the right position. And we're going to have a chance to go ahead and have success. Uh, Will some of it come through scheme? Maybe. But we have a lot of confidence in all of our players' ability that we're going to give them a chance to win their matchups one-on-one. So, you know, at this point in time, we have confidence with our players. I'm excited to get them on the field. We're really excited to get working with them. They've been tremendous in the meetings at this point so far. But I'm tremendously excited about the guys we have on the roster right now, and that's what I'm focused on right now. Do you see Lemieux as a guard or a center? We're going to cross train him as both. He's going to get a, lot, a healthy dose of work at center, and uh, he's also going to work at guard. So, listen, ideally you'd love to be able to play center and guard, and uh, we're going to let training camp kind of dictate where he falls into that. But all of our interior guys, to a degree, are going to be cross-trained at center and guard, as you have to in the National Football League. Now, I read that you had to leave your home in Massachusetts. The, the Internet wasn't quite right, so you were in an apartment in Jersey. And watching it, Coach, I, I felt sorry for you. You looked lonely. <laughs> Did you feel lonely? <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm okay. Look, I'm used to burying myself in basements or offices and closing doors, and I'm okay with that. You're kind of overly consumed with the process of the draft going on already. Um, it's funny. I got a lot of texts and tweets from college buddies and all with a lot of comments from you know, Twitter and all about where I was staying. Most of them were, were ridiculously funny. Um, but it's a hey, look, I went on back. It's, it's a corporate apartment we were staying in for the time being. You know, I'm barely there. So as far as the overly decorating of it, I wasn't really too concerned about it. I was wondering, Coach, if a lot of coaches throughout the NFL are very envious of what Cliff Kingsbury's rocking out there. I mean, that was some – I don't know if you saw it, but that was some – It's amazing. <laughs> I, hey, I saw he's got a nice setup out there. <laughs> maybe next year, right? Well, I'm not gonna, yeah, maybe we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we're doing a virtual again. We'll see. Maybe we'll, you know, on the barbecue in the backyard or something. Hey, but Coach, we, we, we appreciate you? we we really appreciate you coming on. It's really cool of you to do that. Uh, we yeah. wish you the best of luck, and we also want you and your family to stay safe and hopefully get on the football field real soon. Hey, yeah, same to you guys and yours. All right, appreciate that, right, Coach. Take Thank care. you. Right. Thank you.